Okay, when you're ready, mm -hmm. I'll talk you through it. Gauge one, 10 mil scale, Bayer Garrett, um, LMS Garrett. Uh, the two engine units, both twin cylinder of course, uh, have slip eccentric valve gear. So the direction of travel is set by just pushing it in the direction of travel. And likewise, reverse. We have uh, a firing shovel, uh, a poker and a pump handle. And uh, being a Garrett there are two engine units, so there are uh, two axle pumps on the engine and two lubricators as well. So the hand pump is in the rear, rear uh, section of the engine and the front section also has a water tank and there is an equalizing pipe that runs the whole length of the engine so eventually if you fill the uh, rear tank with water it will find its way to the front but practically you need to fill both now there are, there's a bypass control there's a return pipe you can see there there's a bypass control there for the front pump and there's also one on the rear, but you won't spot it straight away unless I tell you because it's this vent so that turns and that's a, a return pipe as well I've got one of these myself and on mine I put uh, uh, a return pipe from the top of the hand that's pump absolute... coming backwards here so you can actually see the, the return there which mm -hmm. is a, a good thing to do and um, Operationally, it's it's pretty simple. One thing I didn't mention, we come down here, Ron. Uh, it has automatic uh, cylinder dr uh, drains. Yep, I know that. Spring loaded uh, all round, so that makes starting a bit easier. Mm -hmm. In terms of other controls, it's simple: blower and regulator, and uh, water gauge is in there, pressure gauge. Um, and that's about it. There are four working safety valves. And the big issue is, is with the cleaning, of course, particularly when you come to sweep the tubes. Mm -hmm. Because you can't get the brush in easily, so these two tanks can be removed from the chassis really easily. I'll show you how to do that later. Yeah, okay. But there are pins either side of each tank unit which withdraw and then you can simply lift these off because okay. the uh, little stub pipes engage with the chassis via o-rings okay. so it's quick and easy it's really incredibly well designed built by barrett engineering the other thing i can tell you is to my knowledge they only ever built seven okay um, so oh yeah yeah that's well, a nice fairly thing. unique yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Good, and it's one I sold recently. Okay, well, uh, sold previously, excuse me. Oh, and uh, it came back. It came back um, for good, for a very good reason. Um, hasn't done an awful lot of running. Okay. Curiously, this one lived in Belgium for many years. Oh, it never run. So came to the UK. Not a year, a year or two in the UK, and now it's going. Again. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. any coal-fired engine it will get through a lot of water particularly this one so if I fill the last uh, last night I did check everything over I didn't steam it but uh, I checked that all the pumps were free and everything was working um, I'm confident enough that I didn't need to steam it last night mm -hmm. because there's a lot of work to clean yeah. it so. We should be fine. So and if it's all right, the water comes in here now. Very slowly. Yeah, slowly. I can so, see some water now. Yes, it will start to, but okay. I, I, sorry, I use a funnel and I'm just uh, get some in there now. I think in practice, um, normally you'll have both pumps on 
uh, if you do need to bypass just this one because it's easier to operate. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll see how we get on. The, the water gauge is not that easy to see in there, but uh, it's working correctly. And it's the standard Barrett type with a, a stainless steel stay um, through the middle of the glass. Plenty of water. And like any steam engine, take the coal fired ones, no different with the bigger ones I drive. The first thing you think about before you even think about putting a fire in it is is there enough water in the boiler. And on these it it doesn't uh, harm to start with a very high level of water. Because so not two thirds, but just really no, higher. No, go to the top of the glass because once you have the blower on, and you need with any coal-fired engine, you need it on fairly fiercely. Mm -hmm. And Garrett's, they're all the same model Garrett's, other ones I've had. Um, the drafting, there's a lot of condensation, but from the exhaust, by mm -hmm. the time it gets to from the cylinders here through the pipework into the smoke box uh -huh. so they tend to be very wet exhausts so uh -huh. sometimes you have, have to help them a bit with the blower which okay. is uh, just like the full size ones so I pumped the boiler up last night so I know there's quite a bit of water in there so we should be okay so we'll leave it at that for a moment okay, I'm not going to use the engine's own firing tools. I'll use my own just because I'm a bit more familiar with them. There's one thing we haven't done or haven't checked. We know we've got water in the boiler. Uh, I oiled all the motion last night underneath as well. Um, but there's one thing we haven't checked, of course, which is steam, steam oil. oil. Mm -hmm. Have a guess where you think the lubricators are. <laughs> it puzzled me when I first came across one of these. <laughs> Don't have a clue. No? Okay, no? I'll show you. <laughs> either end. Just remove. Oh. That's actually there. And there you see them. Oh yeah. Where's the new Ah, right. Yeah, at either end. And there's a, a little drain. Oh, this a classic there. place, actually, isn't it? Not the easiest things to fill. No. That drips neat oil. Mm -hmm. We can assume that uh, there's no water in it anymore. That it's been filled previously, but mm -hmm. uh, just pop a drop of steam oil in there. Yeah, it's. If there was any condensate in there, it would be coming out by now. So they're good and full. It certainly really needs to be finger tight. Snip that up. Don't have to be over tightened. And it just pops back in there like that. And we'll do the same at the on the rear engine. Both uh, engine units are 
mechanically identical. Mm -hmm. The differences are the hand pump at this end mm -hmm. and the bypass. It's been filled previously, like mm -hmm. the front end, that's good. I don't suppose it matters if it doesn't fit on the turn table, does it? <laughs> <laughs> no. Just um, a word on the prototype. Garrett's. Um, the first three, I think, or possibly four, but three were built, or they were probably all built with this style of bunker. Mm -hmm. But the first three kept those for the rest of their working lives, whereas the later ones all got a, a revolving bunker. Oh. So cylindrical. Mm -hmm. To make the fireman's job a bit easier. It just clicks in place. It just clicks in. Yeah, actually, it's just those little lugs on it. Just, mm. you can just bend those up slightly. It will engage a little bit better. So good. So I'll steam it up above the uh, the cutout aperture there, mm -hmm. or at least the firebox above that, in case any ash any ash goes down. Okay, uh, soaked charcoal pieces. Um, I always use paraffin, or you might know it as kerosene. Yep. Um, where you are? We uh, call, uh, well, we have lamp oil, which is yeah. the same. Yeah, or barbecue yep. fluid, but not meths. So I nope. wouldn't recommend no. this because that will <laughs> set fire to your shovel and everything else yeah, yeah, yeah. and no, evaporates no, no. too quickly. Yeah. So uh, I always use paraffin, that's a traditional way of doing it and you've got to kind of hook the there it is get the fire hole door open now some people will fill the box up with charcoal first and whatever you do will get you there but uh, I tend to light the shovel fairly early like the charcoal on the shovel Use a strong fan, the Acrocraft fan's mm -hmm. very good because it's very powerful. Um, standard Aster fan you can use but it'll be hard work mm -hmm. if it doesn't have quite as good a draw. Now we're going to have problems because my uh, lighter upper probably won't work. Yes, it did. Okay. You get your charcoal out of the way when you're doing this because you don't want to sink the whole lot of it. I've always done it that way because that way I can I've got light inside the firebox. You can see what we're doing. So now we just keep load out the charcoal. It's quite a big firebox. People put coal in very early. But, um, I just think that will slow things down. If you get a good hot charcoal fire established, and you've got a bit of steam pressure, then any once that's good and bright, then any coal you put on top of that should catch mm -hmm. very quickly. Whereas if you put coal in now. Um, everything you may not be successful at all, or mm -hmm. you can take an awful lot longer. But as I say, everybody's got their own approach to doing it. Mm -hmm. On the big engines, we don't use charcoal at all, we use wood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just a wood fire. But there um, yeah, you've got a natural draft. 
even then I might put a little bit of coal in for in the corners. So that's, that's totally different. These small models need a different approach. So I don't know if you're counting how many I'm putting in. I'm just doing it instinctively, but having a look. But if you get up to the level of the fire hole door or thereabouts, Once you've sort of got enough in there, just close the door. Maybe a bit of coal stuff in there, a bit of charcoal stuff in there. <laughs> now there is a baffle, I don't know if you can see that. Mm -hmm. yeah, if you move the, move the baffle to let a little bit of top oh, yeah. air in there, yeah, yeah, yeah. that will help to dissipate the smoke a bit and mm -hmm. the combustion. But otherwise you must close the fire hole door. Mm -hmm. So you won't burn steam without open. Well, very handy to have in your toolkit is just in a small paintbrush. And um, that way you can clean up as you go along. Good fireman wants to keep his foot plates clean. So you put you just oh so I, no no, still with the job. Okay, so we've, we've raised about 20 PSI now in pressure. Already? Oh yeah. That's, that's, that's quick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the benefit of using a powerful fan. Mm -hmm. And they're not over firing it. Best to just let it get on with it. Mm -hmm. I, I've got a supply of this um, graded charcoal. Oh, okay. You used to be able to get it here quite easily. Mm -hmm. so, so otherwise, you'd have to break up. Uh, I'm always hammering yes. it in an old t shirt. But yeah, and that's it. Uh, yeah, that's it. So that's the same company, isn't it? So yes, Barrett Engineering. Yeah. I use uh, either soft steam coal or anthracite grains. Um, if I take the lid off, you'll see. Generally, this comes up in rather larger sizes. Um, my anthracite grains burn a lot hotter. Mm -hmm. I tend to prefer them. A bit oh, yeah. finer grade. Yeah. Or, a mixture, or a mixture of the two. Oh. Which ones do you use? Yeah. Well, I use, use anthracite, grains. yeah. yeah. But However, you have to have a hammer them. I can enough, get them a bigger, a little bit bigger, and then you have to. Yeah. yeah. So we now open the bar, which yeah. is on the right side. Yeah. Okay. So now we can. That's the way I always do it. I always get working pressure mm -hmm. with the charcoal, and then, as I say, if we look in there now, we should have a reasonable. Nice fire. Fire. So I'm going to use soft coal just initially. If possible, then keep the uh, Fire hole door closed. Mm -hmm. uh, although 
because you're drawing in a lot, a lot of cold air now. Mm -hmm. not good. So, oh, it's not closed. The door is oh, closed. thank you. Well, it's a, a little bit a way of controlling the fire, isn't it? Opening. Yes. If, yes, you, if you have too much, yeah, then you yeah, open it. Yes, that's yeah. right. It dissipates the smoke as well. Yeah. So yeah. That's not really a problem with it. It's soft coal. Is that uh, what they call Welsh coal? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That uh, smells more. Yes, it does. It smells delicious. That, yeah. That's what you said. <laughs> it's the whole point. Yeah. Yeah. But actually, this, this will... Do that, the, that doesn't smell at all. Heat, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it smells a little bit. Mm. Well, we can't get a Welsh coal in Holland. Well, I'm not sure how much longer we'll get it here. <laughs> oh, it's going to be bent, isn't it? Well, yeah, the, the, I think the company that was mining it was ceasing production. I don't think it's going to be banned, but um, not totally. Not, not for heritage railways, not totally. Mm. Well, it, you can run it on this, but most I found that most of my coal-fired engines prefer this stuff. The entrance side. You say say it's a little bit hotter. It, it'll burn hotter. Yeah. Oh, okay. And it's a fire. It's graded. Well, uh, finally, sits on the shelf a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So the other thing that's really important to keep in mind is that although we may appear to have pressure, we haven't got a fire yet. Mm -hmm. So you always wait until you have a very healthy yes. coal fire? because one, one of the commonest mistakes uh, when people be begin coal firing is they assume at this stage that everything's ready and off they go mm -hmm. and they get half a circuit and it all dies. Oh, yeah. That's because the the fines of the charcoal will drop through the grate in that pan and there's hardly any fire in there at all. And mm. You've got a, a harder job to recover that. So you really so have to build worth, up a coal. It's worth being a little bit fire. more patient mm -hmm. to get that, that coal uh, Well, which is something the most of us are not very well at, being <laughs> patient. Yeah. This is where it gets difficult to get together. People want to get out there and get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's also why they call it building up a fire, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So again, typically, once I've got going, I'll do a circuit and stop anyway. Mm -hmm. check and, and Okay. 
can do, bro. Let's... We can uh, put some coal into the bunker. So mm. right there for if yeah. you want. If you want. So then it, you have it yeah. instantly, yeah. So would you like me to do that? Yeah. It makes right. it harder to clean it up. Oh. <laughs> Thank you.
everything is going well, it's a good time to start thinking about firing again. Oh. Rather, than, rather than to wait until everything is mm -hmm. starting to tail off. Because there'll be a, there's always a cycle with cold firing. You're not on the foot plate to, to watch monitor it. it. Yeah. So you can assume that when you when you fire the engine, you have a black coal on the top of the fire. It'll take a while to burn through before it's producing the maximum heat, mm -hmm. which is why we saw so many of the safety valves lifting and yep. other than very nicely. So there will, will be a peak in the peak in the performance after mm -hmm. every time, after a few circuits after firing. Yeah, yeah. And that's the time. When you reach the peak, you'll know because the safety valves will mm -hmm. be lifting. Um, so instinctively, I would start to think about firing quite soon after that, mm -hmm. before you lose your advantage. <laughs> A bit of condensation now. The automatic drains are going. Both pumps on again now. 